Let's use the Adobe Adaptive Profile to turn this RAW file into this final image. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now, let's begin. Alright, so right away, open up the basic panel, and then we want to change the profile. And in the profile drop down menu, we are going to choose Adobe Adaptive, which is Lightroom's AI profile, and it tries to get the best possible base image. You can see it's working pretty good, but there are some things we need to pay a little closer attention to. For this this image, for example, the sky looks super strange with quite visible bending going on right in here. Also, sometimes in this profile does introduce halo around finer details. You can see it right here along the hay bale, also slightly along this edge right here between landscape and sky. So those are things we really need to look out for when using Adobe Adaptive. But of course, if we start to look for these things and we notice them like in this image, what we can do is to dial down the amount that this profile is applied. I'm going to dial it down to around 70. The problem with the bending in the sky is pretty much gone. We still have a little bit of visible halo around that hay bale, which is a problem, but I think for this image, it's not that noticeable. So with the profile setup, what I'm going to do next is some basic adjustments. And since Adobe Adaptive helps quite tremendously getting the base exposure right, there's not much that I need to do. What you notice is this image is rather dark. So what I want to do is to bring up the shadows to fix that. Let's go with something around 50. And that's looking pretty good for a base image. Now I also want to adjust the white balance. So let's bring up the temperature since I want this to be a very warm shot. And let me pull up the texture for a little more sharpness. I'm also going to bring up the clarity for stronger mid-tones contrast. And then let's bring down the dehaze to add a very subtle glow effect on top. Perfect. Then I'm also going to bring up the vibrance to make this image just a little more colorful. And that's already the image after the basic adjustment. So let's compare to before real quick. These changes were mostly applied through the Adobe Adaptive profile. The exposure looks much, much better instantly. We just brought up the shadows a little more so it doesn't get too dark in here. Now we can focus on a few areas more locally and fine tune these adjustments. Let's open up the masking panel for that. And let me start on the sky right away. I'm going to choose a color range mask. And with that color range mask, I want to target these blue tones up in here in the sky. So let's click in here. We're getting a pretty good selection. But what I want to do with this part of the image is to make it a lot darker, adding some contrast into this image. The problem is we're selecting way more than we need. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient. And here I'm just taking out the brightest parts of the sky, which really don't need to be selected for this effect. Otherwise, it would look unnatural. I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient just to clean up the bottom part here. Now that's looking much better. And all I need to do now to add contrast is to bring down the exposure, making the blue parts of the sky darker. I can also bring up the contrast a bit, further improving this effect. And I do think I want to bring down the temperature just a little bit. want these very dark tones in the top part of the sky to be cold. So I'm going to make them a little colder right away with this mask. Next up, let's use a simple sky selection mask. In general, I want the whole sky to feel a little bit warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. Let's see right around here. I'm also going to bring up the tint, introducing some more of a pink color tone to the sky. I think it looks better this way. And I'm also going to introduce some clarity just to make the clouds a little more visible. All right. Now, when working with the sky mask like this, again, we need to be really, really careful with those halos around those finer details like this hay bale. This effect will get even stronger when using the Adobe Adaptive profile for this image. So be really, really careful. I don't think it's a big deal for this image on the far right side. It is visible, but it's in an area where people aren't supposed to look at. So I think it's OK for me. Let's bring the attention a little more to the center of the image. I'm going to add a glow effect for that. Let me use a radial gradient and I'm going to make it nice and big, covering the brightest part of the image like this. And I'm also making sure it's overlapping the foreground a bit and this hay bale on the right side. Now, I don't want all of this to be affected. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out a little bit so it doesn't become too obvious. Okay, let's see how this works. For the glow effect, I'm going to simply pull up the blacks and I'm dropping the dehaze. Okay, this looks nice, but we're losing a little bit of color due to these adjustments. To bring back color, 
All I need to do is to bring up the temperature, introducing more of a warmer tone in this glow area. I want to further work on the glow, I'm going to use another second radial gradient. This time I'm making it slightly smaller, but I'm overlapping the same area basically, covering the brightest spot, and I'm going to bring up the blacks. Let's also bring up the temperature, introducing even more warmth to this particular spot. And again, let's bring down the dehaze. Okay, nice. I also want to have a little bit of light hitting all these hay bales, making them more visible as well. So let me set this up. I'm going to use an object's selection mask. Here I'm making sure to activate the rectangle select mode because this will just give me better results. And now let's draw a rectangle around the first hay bale. This works pretty good. Of course, as we're going to add light, we don't want to cover the whole thing the same way. So I'm going to subtract with a brush and I'm going to take out the parts that mostly lie in the shadows here. So I think something like this looks pretty good. Let's continue. I'm going to add these other hay bales right away. I'm going to add another select objects mask to the same mask. Then let's draw a rectangle around this one. And of course we need to further modify it. So let's subtract a brush again. This time the light is coming from the right side. So the right side needs to be brighter here. Just like that, I'm continuing my way through the image. Now I'm simply going to bring up the exposure. And just like that, we can make all these hay bales look a little more interesting. Nice. I also want to bring up the temperature making the light hitting those things a little warmer. Okay, and the mask on the very near object right here looks a bit off, so I'm going to further fine tune it, subtracting a brush. Let's make it big, just taking out a little more, making the edge a little softer, but that's about it. Nice. Finally, I wanna kind of make that field right here in the foreground look brighter as well. I'm going to start this using a color range mask. I'm clicking somewhere right in here. Now, obviously I don't want to affect everything that's selected right now. So I'm going to subtract a sky selection to get rid of the sky. I'm going to subtract an objects mask and I'm gonna get rid of that hay wheel. So I'm going to draw a rectangle again around this thing. Then I only want to have a certain part in the field become brighter. So I'm going to click on those two dots, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. And then I'm just going to draw up a radial gradient like that. That's the area which I want to make, make brighter. And now all I need to do is to bring up the exposure once more. So somewhere around 60. I'm also going to bring up the temperature a bit and let's drop the saturation because I don't want this to be too colorful. All right, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before. That's our base image with the Adobe Adaptive Profile used. And here we have the image of, with the masking adjustments. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. I'm going to open up the color mixer first and let's work on the hue because I want the yellow tones of the image to look a bit more orange. So I'm going to pull down the yellow hue first. And I'm also going to pull down the orange hue just to make these warm tones look a bit more intense with a stronger red tone in them. Okay, nice. I'm also going to pull down the purple hue, which will mostly affect the blue tones of the sky, make them look a bit more blueish. And let's pull down the blue hue as well, giving them a more cyan tone. Okay, nice. Now we're lacking a little bit of saturation, but don't worry. Let's go ahead, open up the saturation panel. I'm going to bring up orange and I'm going to bring up yellow. In fact, I might also want to bring up the blue tones. Just a little hint. All right. The colors are still lacking a bit, but don't worry. We are going to change it now with a bit of split toning. And here we're going to use the highlights, the midtones, and the global color wheel to add more warmth to the image with more intense color tones. So let's start with the highlights. Choose a warm hue. I'm going with somewhere in the yellow color range right around here. And I'm really going to pump up the saturation. That's much better. Let's go ahead, open up the midtones. Again, I'm going with the same color tone somewhere around here. Let's bring up the saturation. With the methods, I'm not going as high as with the, with the highlights, just somewhere around here looks good to me. Of course, we wanna keep a bit of color contrast so we can use the shadows to apply a cold color tone to them. So let's choose a blue tone and let's slightly bring up the saturation. 
just a bit is enough like that all right then we have the global color we have left and again we are going to use a warm color tone as i said before and i'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit like this wonderful so you can see the split toning really makes this image pop with really intense color tones of course that's a heavy effect but that's how i like it if you're not a fan of this of course you can always just dial it down a bit now i also want to head down into the calibration tab to do the usual thing which i always do for my images to bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation let's pump it up because i think this image only looks good really colorful like this and finally let's do the sharpening in the details panel bring down the radius increase the details all the way up then we are going to add masking and then we're going to increase the amount of sharpening and we're done there are actually two sensor spots left in this image i'm going to use the remove tool right here to quickly get rid of them choose the brush make it a little bit smaller and let's just paint over all these sensor spots up in the sky and there we have it edited this image using the adobe adaptive profile now two things i want to mention real quick you can see we still have a little bit of overexposure right here in the brightest part of the sky that's something you won't be able to fix with a single image because this is just purely blown out sunlight this would be fixable with exposure bracketing combining an hdr image but since i was shooting a long exposure that's kind of tricky to do so i decided to just leave this area in you could kind of photoshop this out but this is not something you fix with the adobe adaptive profile also, you might be wondering when I use the Adobe Adaptive Profile. So usually I try all the other profiles. So Adobe Standard, Landscape and actually Neutral if I'm working with kind of hard to fix images. And if those don't work, I usually go ahead and try the Adobe Adaptive Profile as some kind of last resort. So I hope this quick tutorial on the Adobe Adaptive Profile will be helpful for your images. And if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching this video.